When many Australians think of bees, they think of the black and yellow striped variety. But there's other tiny little warriors out there, native to Australia, that I'm so passionate about. Now I'm on a mission to educate, inspire, excite and create awareness to the young and old about the importance and magic of Australian native bees. Today I'm heading out to Yellamundi Regional Park, which is at the base of the Blue Mountains, to catch up with my good friend Uncle Lex to learn about the importance of native bees in Indigenous culture. Welcome, and today we're at this beautiful location and we're talking with Lex. Lex, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, I'm a Darug man, so that's the Sydney mob, um, and I'm actually from the Wamali clan, which there's 29 different clans in Sydney. But today we're sitting on Burrubarongal country, that's the kangaroo people, but also part of the Darug clan and I'm connected with country out here at the base of the Blue Mountains and I think we'll leave it here, we're here today to talk about native bees. The special unique relationship that the Indigenous people have with our native bees, definitely. We believe that we get everything from Mother Nature. Everything that we need on a daily basis comes from Mother and these are some of our traditional tools. And so it's not only wooden tools, stone tools, we use skins from animals to keep warm etc. But one of our most exciting things that we get from the bush is our glues. So we have different types of resins from trees. This is Xanthorea resin from the grass tree, or it used to be known as the black boy. But one of my favourites, and your favourites, is native beeswax. Native beeswax. Yes. I reckon it smells like Nana's, Nana's fruitcake. <laughs> it's all the, all the flowers in the bush. And it just... And it's just And amazing. you just mould it. I just mould it, but we can use it for a lot of different things. Traditionally, the indigenous people use propolis, which is a combination of beeswax and plant resin on their yadiki for the mouthpiece. Today we're using pure native beeswax to demonstrate. So I'll show you how we do it. We left some of this out in the sun earlier, so it's softened up. And we work it, and we just put it on here, and we just slowly mould it around. We squash it down the sides so it seals up to the wood. But there's also a hole in here, Mel. So you can see that hole there. So instead of wasting the whole yidiki and throwing it away and saying, oh, it's no good, it's got a hole in it, we have something from Mother Nature. And we can fix it. it. Exactly. So I would just push some beeswax right into that hole to plug up that hole, okay? So not only to fix tools, not only to make jewellery. So many uses. So many uses. Okay, so earlier you were, we were talking about the friendship bracelet that you've made me. Can you explain a little bit about how you did it and what it's made of? But there's actually a special story of that uh, with that stringy bark bracelet. Can you share it with us? I'd love to share it with you. So if we're selfish and we're greedy and we're throwing our rubbish around and for instance the native bees, if we think we're better than the native bees and they're not important, we can be like this bit of bark we're not as strong as we possibly can be. So let's pretend that this is our native bees and this bit of bark is us. And when we're working together, being humble, looking after the environment, looking after each other, in turn we look after the bees and all the other animals, etc. But something special happens when those two pieces of bark come together. Do you know what happens now? We get stronger. We get stronger, and I'm going to show you that. But when we work together with the environment and each other, like this bit of rope, we become strong. We can't be broken. So I'll get a little bit of beeswax. Again, bit of glue. Don't have to go down to Bunnings, we just go out to the bush. <laughs> get a little bit of beeswax from the Mother Nature. Beehives. But don't take it all. It's very important that our old people teach me and my old uncles and aunties and, and their old uncles and aunties taught them that we never take everything. It's not just ours, just because we find that we don't take it all, we only take a little bit a little of what bit. we need. Mother Earth will provide everything that we need, not what we want. So I put that little bit of beeswax in there with the end of the, the And mould it on. Mould it on. So as you can see Mel, after we put the beeswax on and the gum up, and that little loop that we started off with ah, turns into its own little clasp. So pretty neat. Don't have to go to the jewellery shop. This is how I proposed to my wife. I gave her a wedding ring. No, I didn't. <laughs> there you go, a bit of bush jewellery. 
Lovely. And so, can you feel those little scratchy marks as well? Yes. Yep. Well, sometimes our relationships with Mother Earth, with each other, are a little bit scratchy. But the more humble we work with each other, the more respect we have with each other, more trust and patience, all those prickles wear off. It still has it its integrity of strength, but becomes soft as silk. Well, maybe not almost as soft as silk, but very soft very and comfortable. Soft. Not so itchy scratchy. And Lex, I believe you've brought a little friend for us to talk to. Well, he's not a little friend, he's actually my grandfather. Your grandfather? And he's, he's the one that taught me all about native bees and beeswax and all these tools and teaches me about the environment and Mother Earth. Is he ready to say hello? I reckon he might be, I'll, I'll see if he's ready. Hey Uncle Bidji Wong, you here? Yeah, I'm here. How you going? What me, Mel? What <laughs> me, boys and girls? What <laughs> me is like saying hello in our Darug language. How you been, Mel? Very good, thank you. What have you been doing? Just hanging out here with Uncle Lex. What have you been talking about? About bees. About oh, native bees. That's pretty cool, hey? It's very cool. My when I was a little kid, <laughs> we used to track them through the bush. We used to wait for them to come and have a drink by the water and put some soft duck down. That's the really light duck feathers. And when they have a little drink, the feather would stick to them and we could see them because they're like a little black fly, you know. And then they fly through the bush with a white feather on and we could find where they had the sugar bag. That's what we call the beehive. And then we'd rob a little bit of honey. True story. And take some back from mum and our aunties. Anyway, I've got to go because I've got some important business to do in the bush. Got to teach some other kids about the bush. But I'm going to say Yanu. You know what Yanu is? No. Yanu is like, I'll see you later. Because in Aboriginal culture, if I say goodbye, I'll never see you again. So Yanu is like, until next time. Until next time. Stay tuned for more Sydney Stingless Bees adventures. Yanu! If you'd like to explore or know more about Yellow Mundi Regional Park, make sure you check out the Bush Trackers website. If you want to learn more about Australian native bees, be sure to subscribe and check out our other episodes.